Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Bearded Gamer Show. As always, I'm your host, The Bearded Gamer, Chris Arnone. Now before we get into the news, I do want to address why of course is it that The Bearded Gamer has no beard, and moreover, why does he have this ridiculous mustache going right now? It's for a good cause. If you guys watched my last episode, the very first episode, did a whole feature on Movember. It's a big charity event to raise money to fight men's cancers. And to do it, one has to shave clean and then grow a mustache, and only a mustache, through the entire month of November. Hence this weird thing. But, like I said, it's a great cause. You guys should join. You can join our team, VG Charts, or you can just donate. Uh, you know, once again, search for VG Charts. You can search for Chris Arnone, or you can just donate to the site. It, it gives some great money to a great cause, and I highly recommend it. Uh, I said, you can even join our team, grow a mustache with us, and help raise money. Uh, it's a fantastic charity. So, all right, on to good news, bad news. Now, first up in the news this week, everybody knows last week, Uncharted 3 came out. Biggest release last week in a huge month of releases. Well, the game has already sold 1.1 million copies. How huge is that? Well, it's 30% over what Uncharted 2 did in its first week. And this makes it now the fourth fastest selling exclusive title for the PS3. That's behind Gran Turismo 5, Metal Gear Solid 4, and God of War 3. Uh, so, you know, great on Naughty Dog. The game's been getting great reviews. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be fantastic. I haven't quite got my chance to play it yet. Really looking forward to it. And good on them. Already selling really, really well. On to some more good news. Now, most of you who've been following me since we were Gamer TV Weekly, now into Bearded Gamer Show, know I am not a fan of the online pass little trickery that publishers are trying to pull over on us. And it seems that Obsidian's CEO, and I'm going to butcher his name, but I'm going to try, Fergus Urukhart, I hope I got it right, is also very much against the online pass. Uh, he was talking on Twitter, and he was citing specifically Knights of the Old Republic 2, seeing how there's a light side and a dark side, and how that sort of creates two different ways of playing the game. He also uh, cited Fallout New Vegas, one of their own projects, about you know how there's so many different ways you can go through the game. There's You can play for 50 hours and still not hit all the quests. Uh, there's different ways to complete different quests, plus with all the factions they've got, I, I, you know, I've still yet to you know side with Caesar and his legion and see how that part of it goes, or side with Mr. House the whole time and see how that goes. So there's just different ways to play, and it's something I've talked about before, that if you put intrinsic value into a game, you don't need to punish people who buy second hand or who rent because they'll want to go and, and, and keep the game. People won't want to get rid of it if you build intrinsic value in. So good on Obsidian for being on that bandwagon. I hope that they can, uh, they can stay there. You know, a lot of times it's up to the publisher and not the developer uh, when it comes to online passes, but good on them. All right, so some bad news now. We're talking uh, Glenn Schofield of Sledgehammer Games was talking, and he is genuinely pissed off that Modern Warfare 3 got leaked and people have been playing it for a couple days already. Uh, however, and this is where sort of the bad news comes into me, he said he wouldn't be willing, not that he has the power to do so anyway, but he would not be willing to reset the multiplayer statistics when the game launches. Uh, and I think that's, I think that's kind of crappy. Uh, he specifically was quoted as saying, aren't you good enough to catch up when people were complaining about it? And it's like, to me, that's a game maker sort of trying to dictate how we should have fun. If I'm buying the game, I should get to, di to dictate how I have fun with it. Some people like to race up to the prestige. That's what they want to do. They want to be the first one to get to prestige or prestige two or prestige three, uh, which apparently some people have already gotten to with the leaked version, prestige three. And so I think it's kind of crappy. That, you know, these people have gotten an unfair advantage, and I think... It, I don't really know how hard it would be, but it seems it wouldn't be the hardest thing in the world to just reset the multiplayer statistics as soon as the game launches and give everybody uh, an even uh, launching pad. But, uh, so hopefully maybe they'll change their minds, but it's also, as, we, as I said, it's not up to Mr. Schofield if they do that. So hopefully the people who are in charge of it go ahead and do it. So, all right, let's finish up with some good news. Ubisoft has confirmed the development of Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Patriots. Now, the game is going to be due out in 2013. Uh, it has been a while since we've gotten a Rainbow Six. Uh, I believe Las Vegas 2 was the last one we got. Uh, 
pretty well reviewed, uh, pretty good, decent sales, obviously good enough to keep going with the Rainbow Six uh, franchise. Um, they are promising a bold new direction. There's a terrorist cell called the True Patriots that they see um, America is just too far gone gre with greedy politicians and so many other problems, and so they're terrorists from, from the U.S. within the U.S., and the uh, Rainbow Six Squad has been deployed to counter them. So that's going to be that game. Uh, not really much else is known right now. There's some gameplay footage which uh, just played. Uh, well, not even actual gameplay footage, probably some very, very early pre-alpha footage, but there you go. 2013, new Rainbow Six. Okay, now we're going to head into some brand new segments. First one is called The Pull List. Now, that's right, I am the bearded gamer, but not everything is about video games. I am a nerd of many flavors, and that includes comic books. I'm a big comic book nerd. So, the pull list, each week, I'm going to recommend some games that you need to go to your local comic book shop and buy. All right, first up this week is Avenging Spider-Man number one. Now, personally, I'm not even a huge fan of Spider-Man, but here's the deal. Doing the interior arts on this one is Joe Madrera. Joey Mads is back in comics. Guy was huge in the 90s. He was doing covers of X-Men when he was like 16. Uh, he was just... He was, he was massive. He, he, he blew up the comic book scene back in the 90s at, at a time when it was pretty huge to begin with. And then he left, and he's been off doing video games. He's a big part of Vigil Games. He's the creative director for Darksiders, Darksiders 2. But he is back doing the pencil work for Avenging Spider-Man number one. Very exciting. Go pick it up. All right. Next, I got a couple of titles in the Batman universe. First up is Batgirl number three. Now, why am I recommending Batgirl number three? Well, Nightwing is guest starring. And of course, the history between Barbara and Dick is really deep. And whenever these two get together, Nightwing has just, anytime he's had a relationship that floundered, it floundered big, it exploded. And it creates a lot of fireworks whenever he's in a comic with one of his exes. And Gail Simone is writing it. And we know she knows how to take two characters, and her character interactions are probably some of the best in the industry. So expect some major fireworks when these two get back together on the same page at the same time. It's going to be really great. All right, next book, still in the Batman universe, is Batwoman, number three. Now, why am I say Batwoman? Well, I've been following this since it relaunched. Why? Because J.H. Williams is back on the book. Uh, several years ago, he, he did Batwoman, and it was phenomenal. Everyone was absolutely leveled by his artwork, and he is back at it again with, the, I mean, the woman who really just put him on the map, Batwoman. And so there is no way you shouldn't be picking up this book if for nothing else than his amazing layouts and interior artwork. But the story's also been really cool, so definitely go pick it up. All right, last book, going to go a little bit indie, not too indie, with a Dark Horse comic called House of Night Number 1. Now, I got a chance to flip through a preview of this one, and this is not my normal kind of book. It's sort of like these Wiccan vampires meets Harry Potter. Yeah, it doesn't sound like the kind of thing I'm normally into, but I somehow found myself sucked in. It's these... Uh, young girls who become vampires and then have to go to this academy. Uh, but somehow it really, really works. There's great characterization, great artwork, uh, the whole thing. Like I said, it just sucked me in in a way I really wasn't expecting and uh, pleasantly surprised by it. So go pick it up. And oh yeah, the other reason, it's only a dollar. Yeah, a dollar. Go buy it. What are you waiting for? Go pick it up. House of Night number one. Okay, well, that's it for the pull list. Next new segment is called the Software Sound Off. Now, this one we're going to using numbers from VGCharts.com, talking about games and how well they sold. And this is going to be week ending October 29th, so this is not last week, but the week before. They get all their tallies in. All right, so heading off the list, of course, as you would imagine from that week, Battlefield 3 takes spots number 1, 2, and 3. It's 360, PS3, and PC. You combine all the numbers, it brought in about 4.2 million units sold from Battlefield 3. Just massive, massive launch. Uh, number four is Final Fantasy Type-0 for the PSP. Sold almost 500,000 units. Uh, number five and number six is Batman Arkham City, PS3, and then the 360. Uh, they each brought in about 350,000 units. Uh, all told, since launch, for the consoles, 2.5 million units moved of Batman Arkham City. So, great to see. It's a fantastic game. I have been playing it incessantly recently. Oh my god, Virtual Cape and Cowl. Oh, yeah. Love it. Great to see that it's selling well. 
All right, number seven, uh, another debut from last week, is Kirby's Return to Dreamland, sold about 200,000 units on the Wii. Uh, number eight, uh, a long standby, Just Dance 3, another 175,000 units. Number nine, FIFA Soccer 12 for the PS3, moved another 150,000 units. And number 10, one that has been on this list for a very long time, is Mario Kart for the Wii. Somehow sold another 143,000 units. That puts it at almost 29 million sold since Mario Kart Wii debuted. It's just, it's massive. Um, and of course, today, Modern Warfare 3 launches, so I'm sure that we'll, we're going to see some absolutely massive numbers from that, and next week we'll be sure to give you the skinny on how that one goes. All right, so to finish off this episode, there's a segment I call Nerd TV. Now, this is my chance to just sort of go around the internet and find videos that I think are either really, really awesome or really, really funny, but either way are very nerdy in their nature. And this week, it's actually a video that's been around on the internet for quite a while, but I've never talked about it in video. I'm a big fan of Joe Hill and his books, his comics, Lock and Key, his first couple of trades right here. Well, there was a pilot made. Unfortunately, it was not picked up. This makes me very sad. The first time I read Lock and Key, I thought this would be perfect for a movie or even better, a TV show. I, I, it would be fantastic. And then there's a trailer. And the trailer had me sold and makes me even more sad that it didn't get picked up. But then again, this is also the network that brought Family Guy back from the dead. So maybe if we're all vocal enough, they will give us lock and key. Check out the trailer. Welcome to Key House. Why is it called Key House? Oh, that's a good question. It's an old name. The whole place is amazing. I feel like I know the house. How long have you been here? A long time. I'm sure it was just an echo. There's nobody in there. Maybe there was. The well's dangerous. Hello? I found this whole key. With that key, you can open almost any door. Step through it to anywhere in the world you like. I can be a ghost. Were you a ghost today? For a little while. What's it feel like to be a ghost? You think there's more? Yeah, lots of them. There's lots of keys and lots of doors. Every time I come back here, it's like I remember how much of it I blocked out. Bodhi! Mom says you gotta come in before dark. Okay, coming! It's time. Your father hid things from me, Bodhi. This is not about Dad. Shut up! This is all about Dad! Well, Dad's not available! He's dead! I need the key. You really my dad's best friend. It's upon a time, buddy. Oh, God. Need to wait. For what? My six-year-old to pay help me across his forehead? We we'll have to help. I promised. You're right. I do. How awesome is that? How awesome would that be? So let's all get vocal as we can and tell Fox, yes, we need that show. All right, that does it for this episode of the Bearded Gamer Show. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, Bearded Beard Gamer Show. Uh, I also have a Facebook fan page, Chris Bearded Gamer Arnoni, so be sure to Facebook fan us, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>